Hello chess fans, it's Craig Marr and Kevin Reese giving you a live lesson. So who's your opponent today, Kevin? His name is Kev Perleros. I quite like the North Star. I thought it, it's got two R's. Um, okay. It was in Mechanics Tuesday Night Marathon. Um, this Tuesday was for November 9th, 2021. And what is your opponent rated? It's rated 1746. And what is your current rating? Uh, 1900. Uh, so yeah, I think you hit your floor, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I messed up against, uh, against, what's the, uh, Svoboda. Okay. Um, I was really good that one. I was with my king in the center, and I had three pieces, and he had a rook. Okay. And we both had queen. Now, what do you think you need to do to reach the next level, which is probably 2,000? Um, just, uh, just to work on my calculations, um, be able to see more, increase my ply. Increase ply, and watch out for weakening pawn moves sometimes. Okay? Or sometimes when you have something going on in the center, you're you're releasing the tension too much sometimes. Okay. You so upon push as opposed to a train. Yeah, sometimes it's better to maintain tension in the center. Okay. Well oh, this one we have Karo Khan opening. Yeah. Okay, we have the exchange variation, the uh, Panov Botvinnik attack with C4. This was in Fisher's time one of the main weapons against Karl Khan. And nowadays, 3E5 is the preferred method. Nevertheless, this is still a reliable uh, opening for white. Okay, Knight F6 is normal. I have a, um, I have a book by Karboff. On this okay, e6 is actually quite playable. To do e6 is quite playable. This is the normal move. This is the move that I prefer here. But e6 is okay. Now I got a little problem with this bishop. All right, can you when they play e6, I'll let my signal play the side because there's no pin. Right, you don't have to worry about the pin. Whenever I see e6 early, I'm very pretty happy. Nevertheless, this is the move that Gingy played against me, the great Roman Dindish Kashvili. So I know that it is a move. Well, okay. if he plays my F6 and Knight C3, we're just going to expose him to what I thought was the main line. Well, okay, yeah, maybe this is considered the main line. I'm, you know, I'm not that booked up on the Panov Botvinnik attack. Okay, Knight. C3 or what? No, whose move is it? It's his move. He plays this. Oh, now this is now this is really getting strange. This one. The knight simply should belong on knight C6 and knight F6. This is the correct development. This is getting a little weird. This is strange. A very strange move. The, the way the way I I looked at um, we're in the opening normally this this. And then there's, oops, so this is here. Then there's three moves: this, this, and this. So that knight's on the wrong, wrong square. Um. Okay, I'm doing this. I need this. Okay, now we have kind of a a, a so-called. Um, normal looking position except for the knight being on a really weird square and I don't really see justification for this. Now we have a problem. How's he going to develop his queen's bishop? Okay, so so far I think white has the advantage. Um, so I, I, so I played one of the moves, it took me a while. Like, Okay, no, that's actually a good move here. Now, a lot of you may have trouble understanding this move, uh, but it's a very useful move in the queen pawn and queen side openings. Sometimes I want to 
play here with a, with a powerful, with, this is what I call a side center. This is still very powerful for white. And so normally, they're gonna attack me this way, try to break up these pawns, but then I wanna play b4 and reinforce my center. So this is actually a very good move in this opening. Yeah, here, here, and over here, and I'm all ready for that. Yeah, now you're, you know, you don't, you don't have to uh, break up your center. You can maintain the center by either bishop f4, or rook b1, or bishop b2, something like that. So you're able to maintain the strong pawn formation by playing the very subtle a3 early. So that, that's why they do that. Bishop e7 is good development. Bishop d6 is another little bit more aggressive way to develop, but bishop e7 is solid. In my Karpov book, when they play bishop e7, then c5 is a move not exactly in this position. Um, so that, let, let that be a signal like that. And now I'm all prepared for this, like if we're looking. So white to move here. Yeah, I played this. So you play c5. Now this is very good because it really, uh, messes up the knight because the knight can't go to b6 now and now if here this could be kind of dangerous or or simply maintaining the center and this piece is going to really suffer although maybe it can reroute at some point but right now it's on a very lousy square so i would be thinking about a5 to slow this attack down for black what did he do here okay he played this E6, okay. Well, that makes sense to me. Okay. Now White has to come up with an idea about what am I going to do with the rest of my pieces here, especially the bishops. Now that's a good developing move. This is the optimum square for that piece, aiming at the king side here. Notice the difference between this bishop and this bishop. White has the better minor piece here. Okay, that's a good move to, you know, prevent the development of the bishop. You know, on your prior move, Caven, I would have come out with the bishop to prevent this move. And then play bishop d3 because this bishop is on a very important diagonal. Now if I want to get the diagonal, I have to go here, here, and here. But I can still take over this diagonal. Yeah. So this it's isn't going to stop it. my development. Because I know uh, one time I had a guy make that play. Well, oh, yeah, this might be a threat here. Maybe, you know. Well, I, I canceled. So okay. Because if, if he takes, I'm tempoing the knight, so I have time to play before well, and not lose my pawn chain. Yeah, okay, so uh, I, I prefer white here because he has a cramping pawn on c5 and black cannot develop his pieces. So this is a good thing. And black is still, uh, okay, so castles. Black is still under the gun and has not equalized. Good move to prevent any counterplay with e5. Now here, you know, I have the pawn, I have the knight, I have three guys on that square. And meanwhile, black only has one, two, only two on that square, so therefore this move is not playable. I simply, uh, I simply captured it. But, but notice it takes away from this, so, like maybe there's some lines where this is weak then, after, um, you play this. Oh, now this is kind of a lemon. This is a lemon. Because now I'm going to be able to have this solid cramping pawn structure for the rest of the game. Yeah. So this, this, is a, this is better, but white still maintains the advantage. This, this just doesn't cut it here, folks. It just doesn't cut it. B4, now see, this, white has a superior pawn structure with a powerful, protected past pawn and now uh, all white has to do is you know get control of this diagonal which I might be able to do you know maybe in the future and then black has absolutely no counterplay at all so that's kind of the idea okay. 
it's funny what you said because I had got that thing. I actually thought of that idea that you said earlier. Yeah. Uh, I knew I wanted a Bishop F4 and I knew because um, I want I want to strengthen the A5 square. Also, and, uh, Kevin, this, this, this type of move is going to be devastating and you can't really protect the queen side. Yeah. This is powerful. Eventually I did that. Eventually I did that. extremely powerful. But, um, so, this is a classic case of a bad bishop. Black is under super pressure here. Can't move anything. Bishop is dead. Queen is dead. Knight's dead. Other knight is dead. Bishop is dead. Rooks are dead. This is, you know, a very powerful uh, way to get into the position here. Yeah. Or queen d2 and trying to take over this diagonal. Well, this I is a powerful I diagonal. the first method, you know, Okay, yeah, that's another way to do it. So going back here. And then I decided to, to go here. Well, I think bishop g3, I would try to take over the diagonal first. And then maybe come in. But this is quite good, you know. Um, yeah, this is quite good. Well, he's got all kinds of weaknesses. Um, now, White has a very nice squeeze, but he has to decide how am I gonna, how am I gonna get in there? How am I gonna uh, win the position? Well, well, let me see here, Kevin. This is also good, too. This is what I was thinking yeah, about. Yeah, I know. I, I was thinking about that, but I, I guess... But I F4 guess. Is, uh, is good here to have a big cramp, a big clamp going on. See, this is a big clamp because he doesn't want to take the knight. And these pawns are cramping him, and you've got pressure on all sides of the board here. Center on the flank. In fact, th this is so weak here, the structure, that just put going here is probably already decisive because he, he just just has too many problems over here. You know? So I would already say this is close to busted. One of the things that you want to do in cramped positions, try to exchange pieces. The problem here is he can't exchange off his bad bishop. He doesn't want to capture the knight because then, then more bad stuff will happen to him. And then this file gets open. So basically, we have almost a Zeus Wong, middle game Zeus Wong. That means there are no moves, basically. So, Kevin, I would say that you played it well up to this point, and uh, White has gotten a clear advantage. So now it's hard to see how is White going to win the game, how's White going to increase that advantage? Because White has a clear advantage, but sometimes the hardest thing in chess is to win a one game. What did you play here, Kevin? Queen F3 maintains the pressure. Okay. Now that is something Black should always, always... This is a capture which Black should always try to resist from doing because what did you do here? That's the correct way to take and now Black has not gotten away from his problems. Sometimes when you have a knight, a powerful piece in your territory like this knight, the best thing to do is to try to just maneuver around the knight. Although that's not easy to do, but I would be thinking about more along the lines of knight back and then try and maneuver out onto this square. But exchanging the knight, this is something I see a lot of you people doing, and you just get into a very uh, bad game here. See, the knight doesn't have anywhere to go in this position except to a bad square. If you go here, it's too dangerous. G4, boom, winning a piece. So the knight has to go to a bad square, I think, right? Well, the thing about that square is what I felt is that he's trying to do this break. Yeah. And I was worried about that break. So what did, what did he do here? Yeah, um, yeah he moved to D7. Okay. Um, and, and so then 
I, I try to um, be strong on that on that file. Okay, well right that's now. correct. Uh, now he doesn't want to go here because this is too dangerous here, right? You know what? That's, that's, he did go there, and I missed that shot, and I was like, ah. Well, no, wait a minute. It's not so simple because of Bishop here. This is also winning for uh, for Black. So you you did the right thing. You didn't. No, this is a trap here. Okay. So uh, what did you do here? the idea behind that? My now? idea is that now I'm preventing this by taking here. Okay. Well, what would be you know, like another good plan for white in this position? Um, can I just go in there? No, you don't want to go there because he takes with a knight and then bishop h6 maybe or something. Um, I think what you want to do is see if there's any way I can, you know, get the knight to g4. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, Maybe. I was, I did eventually try to, I believe I, I tried to go for that, but let's see. Yeah, I knew I wanted the knight there, but it, it was, it was such a long journey that I never figured out how to, how to get it there. Okay, so, so far this has been excellent play by White. And we are going to finish up with White having a clear advantage and Kaven going on to win. So long, folks.